Hello and welcome to my show, Indus Cuisine. And I'm your chef, Basim Malcolm. We're back with another new episode and a new recipe from the heart of Pakistan. Today's recipe is very easy and is one of the most favorite recipes throughout Pakistan and wherever you'll see Pakistanis around the world, you might have heard about this recipe. It's known as Murghe Musallam or also the simple name is Burg Musallam. Today's recipe is loved by people in Pakistan but was also loved by the Mughal emperors who basically ruled this subcontinent back in the day. And apart from that, before the Mughal emperor, Babur, because Babur was the first Mughal emperor who came to Pakistan, did his conquest and took over the place and then he was the person who actually spread Islam but Islam didn't start from there. Islam was spread in this region by the famous trader called Ibn Battuta. He used to say that the first dish he actually came across in this region was Murghe Musallam and this was the dish back in the day it was very interestingly cooked. Nowadays it's like basically cooked but back in the day the way of cooking it was very different what was done? They used to take a whole chicken, they used to take boiled eggs and stuff it in the chicken, they used to take minced beef or mutton and stuff it into the chicken as a whole, sew it up and then they used to steam it and then they used to fry it. They used to do all of these techniques, why? Because they didn't have the modern pans and pots back in the day, but now they do have it. So this recipe was also loved by Akbar, the emperor of the subcontinent and everyone knows that Akbar was the most influential emperor of that day, why? Because he loved everyone across he and he uh, was very famous for marrying many many women so his way of ruling was if he wanted to take over a place he used to go do a conquest and after doing that conquest he used to marry a local woman from that area so in the famous uh, book of akbar which is also known as ayne akbari murg musallam is also mentioned over there in very detail and it is that recipe that he used to basically serve to all the royal courts or all the people across pakistan back in the day when he used to have a special occasion in his uh, barga, darga, that is the local word or the Persian word for where the emperor gives his sermon uh, to the people of his nation. So today's recipe is very easy, quick history and you'll see some more history on the slides with a lot of dates and stuff but what are the ingredients for today? The ingredients are simple, we'll be using around 1 kg of chicken legs, we'll be using the chicken as whole, you can even cut it down, you can uh, take the drumstick on one side, you can take the thigh meat on the other but this is how I'll do it. You keep this over here, you don't need it right now. You need around four tomatoes, you'll finely chop them and it should accumulate to at least one cup. Then you need two onions finely chopped. Then you'll be needing peanuts, green chilies, sage leaves, bay leaves basically. Then you need Pinot Greek leaves, which is also called Kasuri Methi. It is dried, it's like this and it's kind of crushed. It brings a very nice aroma to the recipe. Then you need some garam masala. You need haldi powder, which is also known as turmeric in English. Then you need uh, red chilli powder, you need the black cardamom which we use in the recipe to bring out the flavour because it's very fragrant and it tastes very nice in the food. Then you need some coriander powder, cinnamon sticks. Okay, when it comes to oil in this recipe, you'll be using two different types of uh, oil which is also considered to be fat. Why? Because that's what we call it. You need mustard seed oil. Yes, you're hearing it right. And in Pakistan, it's very famous that mustard seed oil is basically used in the initial days and in current day Pakistan also to make pickles. Basically, it's that oil that is used for pickling any form of vegetable or even chicken in our country. Then you can use some clarified butter known as ghee, around six to seven pieces of garlic cloves, some ginger, and that is about it. In the end, you'll be using some coriander fresh to just give it a nice fresh uh, herb flavor. Okay, so what you need to do first, you need to bring a pan and bring the pan to heat. Increase the heat, uh, not too much, but just lower it a bit. Once the pan comes to heat, we'll add the oil and then what we'll do, I'll let you know. First of all, what you need to do is you need the chicken. Take a separate knife, basically. We also call it the boning knife. I've washed the chicken, it's completely dry. I haven't taken out the additional fat on top. Why? Because that fat will melt down and it will also give a very nice flavor. So what we'll do first is we shall just pull the chicken take it out from the joint that's the joint and now the chicken is free you can see why am i doing this why because when you take the joint out of the chicken what happens is when it cooks if it comes closer because the meat is going to shrink the texture and the shape of the leg won't change so just pull it 
and take the joint out. I'll do it again over here. And this is done. Now, just make some cuts. One, two, three. That's it. Three cuts on the front and three cuts at the back. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. Why am I doing this? The spice will go settle in properly. It will get cooked nicely and there will be nice flavor. This is done. Okay. Now what you need is, first of all, rinse your hands before continuing. So, this is done. Take some tissue paper, dry it out. Why? Because you don't want uh, water to be dripping in the pan. The pan is hot. It's come back to heat. Now just take a paring knife. I'll just take the cling wrap off from my oil which I'm using. First goes in the mustard oil, mustard seed oil also. Then you shall add the clarified butter. This is done. Keep it on the side. As you can see, it's coming to heat. Just shake it a bit. What you'll do first is, you take a piece of garlic, just cut it into half and add it to the oil as whole. Just saute the chicken, put it whole. Now you need some salt, the salt is over here. What you'll do is, I've made some cuts, just put some salt on the chicken on top. What will happen is, the salt will go in and the moisture will come out. Give it a lid. Reduce the heat to medium. And let it cook for three minutes each side. We're basically cooking it in mustard oil before we're adding any other spices or any other ingredients. Why? Because I want the chicken to get this nice flavor of mustard oil and clarified butter together. Okay, now you've used this board. First of all, I'll pick this knife and I'll keep it at the back. And now you do not need the chicken board. It goes at the back and we bring a fresh board in front. Wash your hands once, rinse them properly. And now we get ready for the vegetables. Okay, this is done. First of all, what you'll do is you need some ginger, around four to five pieces of garlic. We put one over there and we'll use another four to five pieces. For the garlic, what you need to do is you need to finely chop it. So I'm just going to press it like this. So as you can see, I've crushed the garlic. Just pass your knife through it now. You have finely chopped garlic now. Push it on the side. Always give it a lid. Why? Because from one side it's frying slowly and on the other side it's getting the steam. You can see the steam collecting on top and the chicken is getting nice and tender. So now what you need is you need some ginger which you shall finely slice. We need around a tablespoon a tablespoon and a half, whatever you don't need, push it at the back. Finely slice the ginger. And here we go, we have ginger and garlic ready. Now what you need to do is change the side of the chicken. Pick it up and just change the side. Give it a lid and now cook it for another four to five minutes on low heat. The heat is a little high and keep cooking. Okay, so now this is done. Keep it on the side. Always keep your board very clean and easily accessible. Now you need around four tomatoes. I'll convert it into a paste. So I'll just take the eye of the tomato out. and I'll uh, cut it into four halves. This is done. Toss tomatoes in the food processor. One, 
2, 3 and 4. This is done. Pick it up and the paste is done now. So now what we'll do is we'll let this cook over here until the time this is cooking we'll go for a short break and once we're back from the break we'll continue cooking. Why? Because we need to give the chicken at least two to three minutes more. Keep watching in this cuisine. Welcome back, you're watching Indus Cuisine and I'm your chef Basim Akhun. During the break I did basically nothing, I just waited for you and I just cleaned up a bit and as you can see the chicken is 60% cooked. Now what you need to do is pick up the chicken and take it out. You don't need to add all the other spices right now. You can see it's nicely fried, it's delicious. I'll keep it here. and the last piece goes over here. I fried the chicken right now in just some mustard seed oil and just some clarified butter. Okay, and you can see this oil, you will not throw it away. This is all the nice flavor. I'm just gonna shift it over here, why? Because I'll tell you, the pieces of garlic which I was frying, I will just pick them up with the fork over here and discard it in the dustbin. This is done. Put it over here. Reduce the heat to the pilot. Why? Because I'll tell you, you have to start cooking again. Okay, this is done. I'll keep this chicken on the side. And first of all, what you need is you need to add some ginger and garlic to the mix. Why? Because I want to deep fry these ingredients. We use the ingredients very commonly, these two ingredients very commonly, but the timing matters a lot in Pakistani cooking. So what I'll do is I've just tilted it and I'm just deep frying it in the oil. Add like a pinch of salt so that the moisture comes out of these vegetables. Now keep the heat really, really low because you do not want to brown it a lot. Okay, just pick up a tissue and if you see any spillage of oil, clean it out. This is done. My hands are also clean. Okay, now the next step. You need some onions, two onions, finely chopped, the root is on and we'll just quickly finely chop them keep an eye over there because you don't want to burn the garlic remember that the heat needs to be really low done now pick up the roots throw it in the dustbin and now transfer the onions over here mix it up increase the heat to full rinse your hands once dry them out Give it a lid and now you need some other ingredients. But before that, add around two pinches of salt. This is done and let it cook. Okay, now after this you will add some spices but give it around 30 to 40 seconds on high heat so that the onion gets a little soft. Whatever you don't need over here, just pick it up and throw it in the dustbin. Pick the cloth, keep it over here. Take around one, two, three and four pieces of green chilies. Rinse your hands once more. And take the sticks off first. Keep an eye here. Reduce the heat to low and slit the green chilies like this. This 
this is done. Now it's time to add the spices. The spices go in. Uh, first, we shall add the red chilli. Now you have to spread them out. Why? Because I want them to fry. The red chilli goes here. Then you add the coriander powder. Then you add the turmeric powder. Because it's dry, it will start soaking in the fat, basically the oil in the pan. So don't worry. Then add some garam masala, not too much, just a bit. Then you want the dried fenugreek leaves. And then you want some cinnamon in this. This is done. Pick up three sage leaves, push them down on the spices like this. Increase the heat, give it a lid and let it cook for around 30 seconds more. Till the time that's happening, what we'll do, we'll just take out the things we do not need. Why? Because it's nice to have a nice clean station. And now what you need is you need to transfer this over here. Just give it a nice whisk once. That's it. Pick this up. Keep this here. And let's mix it up. This is done. Now the paste goes in. Shake it a bit. Keep this on the side. And start mixing it. You need a wooden spoon. Shake it, reduce the heat to low and now add the peanuts but not like this. Before that you'll add the green chilies. Push them down a bit, they'll start cooking nicely. Give it a lid for around one minute. Take the peanuts, keep them here. And now what you need to do is finely chop them. Remember, whenever you're chopping any dry fruit, always sharpen your knife once. Then, always dry it out. The reason is why? Because your knife needs to be really, really dry whenever you're chopping any dry fruit with it. Why? Because otherwise your knife will slip. And once your knife starts slipping, there's a chance that your hands can get cut. So you want to finely chop the peanuts. Always press them down. Why? Because you want each and every piece of the peanut to be resting on the board, not uh, piling up on each other. Why? Because if it starts piling up like this, what will happen is you won't get a perfect cut. Secondly, your knife will slip and then again, remember one thing, if you just cut your hand simply with a knife, it's fine. But if your knife slips on a dry fruit, the cut goes deeper. Why? Because the balance goes out and it literally gushes through your meat of your hand. Okay, anyway, this is my job to tell you. That's why I'm telling you it's a bit off I know to hear that your hand gets cut but if you know the realities you'll be away from all the bad things in life and cutting your hand is a very bad thing okay so just slowly and gradually pass your knife through the peanuts it's a bit time consuming you might be thinking how will this happen but as you see them getting chopped they'll start getting smoother and the second time you pass your knife through it from right to left it will be quicker so what you're seeing is I'm chopping them and then I'm just pressing them down. And remember, Pakistani cooking is all about flavor, timing and texture. You have to maintain good texture and then only you can cook well. So this is almost done. When you see a little bit of powder coming on the side, that means that it's time to basically toss the peanut in the pan. This is done. Now, the oil has also come up. It smells beautiful. First, we add in the peanuts mix it up and now you need some coriander around this much would do. You want it really finely chopped. 
like fold it like a cigar and start chopping it. Keep folding it, you'll get a nice fine texture. You don't want the leaves to be coming in your mouth. Remember that. It's done. Okay, now add this over here. Mix it up. Now the chicken. You don't need the board anymore. Pick it up. Take it at the back. You'll always see some tissue over here. Why? Because the board won't slip. You can also just take out all the coriander on the board on the side. Keep the counter clean. Remember that. Rinse your hands. Dry them off. And as you can see, there's a nice, beautiful texture and I'm loving it over here. It smells really nice. Pick the chicken now. If you can zoom over here, you can see this nice juice coming out of the chicken. It's nice, juicy and delicious. We place it back. Remember, it's not fully cooked. If you see any juices in the pan, Keep it on the side, rinse your hands once. And now, add half a cup of water. A little bit in between. Some on the side. Shake it up. Take some salt. Add it in this Masala paste over here. Just take one whole green chili, take a knife, slit it, place it in between, give it a lid, increase the heat, and once it comes to boil, which it will just in another 20 seconds, reduce the heat to medium and keep the lid on and cook it for another five minutes till the water goes down and the what is completely gone out and you can find this nice red paste which you were seeing in the beginning. As you can see today's recipe is ready, quick and easy, a recipe from the heart of Pakistan and also loved by the Mughal Empire and also by Ibn Battuta who got religion to our country back in the day before the Mughal Emperor Babur also. It was a very easy recipe. You need to understand this recipe is not a gravy based recipe. This recipe includes uh, chicken which should be basically fried 65 to 70 percent in the beginning and once it's done it will be dished out on the side then you'll make this nice masala and then put the chicken back into it and cook it for another five to ten minutes so that the 25 percent or 30 percent of the remaining chicken which is not cooked will be cooked properly this recipe is done i've just put the masala beneath the bay leaves the sage leaves and also i've put three pieces of chicken easily Three people can have this recipe, enjoy it with rice or if you want to have some pita bread or naan bread with it, you can also have that. I hope you liked today's episode. I'll see you in another episode of Indus Cuisine. Signing out, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.